Welcome back. In this video, I put the smart car engine back together and get it ready to put back into the car. So, as I said in the earlier video, I bought a, a brand new set of pistons and rings, had this reboard. These are half a mil oversize, and this is just installing the final piston. So, there's only a small chamfer on this block, um, and I use my ring compressor. It's probably not the right size to be honest because these are quite small pistons, but clamp them down, give it a tap in, and the last one I just uh, need to give it a bit of helping hand with a screwdriver, just tap it in. Once it's in, I just check that it actually moves up and down freely. Uh, well, there's some resistance, but um, that it feels right. And then I uh, turn the block over and get the crank ready for install. So when you do this, you need to make sure there's absolutely no oil under those main bearings. So I use a bit of acetone and wipe them down. So I wipe the crank um, uh, bearing housings and the bearing itself. And once I've done all of those, I do the con rods as well. Then I'll put a bit of assembly lube on the bearings, just on the bearing face, lower the crank in. And then in the middle, there's two uh, thrust bearings. And obviously you need to install them the right way around. And um, a bit more lube before I put them in. And you can see them here. Uh, they've got the two wear grooves and that actually faces the crank itself. So they just slide around and they sit on the on the top half. So I'll put them both in. And then once they're in, just check that it rotates properly. And then I install the main bearings and uh, the housings and clamp them down. Now, most manufacturers seem to have, you know, torque settings for bolts and, uh, you know, it might be 50 newton meters or 70 or 40 or whatever. But with Smart, for some unknown reason, that you've got to tension to a certain torque. And then once you've done that, then you've got to rotate them another, say, 60 degrees or 90 degrees or whatever. So it's a little bit different. Uh, you notice I put a bit of molybdenum base grease on these bolts just to make sure they torque down properly. Um, so I set them to the right torque setting and then once the initial torque setting is done I just rotate the block around onto the bench so I can hold it properly and um, you can see I'm using the angle of the um, of the lever there just to, to work out exactly how far I'm going so uh, if you have a look on this bolt I start at the at the upright position and I go down I need to tension them about 60 degrees further than where they were. Once I get those done, put the crank, uh, uh, sorry, the Conrod bearing housings on. Same sort of thing. Uh, these get tensioned up, and once they're tensioned, then you do them up a further 90 degrees. So I'll do that on all of those. Once they're in, check it spins freely, and, you know, it all looks and feels really good. So there's the crank uh, and the pistons finally back in. And then I put the baffle plate back on. Now it's quite a solid baffle plate in a smart car. I don't know why it's so solid. Uh, it's acting like a bit of a support, I would think. So I put that in again, took them to the right settings. Uh, when the head gasket goes on, that's a stainless steel gasket. It's got some sealant around the edges already. So you just wipe that down with acetone. You don't put any lubricant, no sealant, nothing. Just put that straight on, wipe the head down, the head side as well. And then what I do, lift the head on, and then again, same process, put all the head bolts in, torque them properly in the right sequence, and then that is basically done. Now when you do this, uh, I obviously I've got no cams in at this point, so there's no way I can foul on any of the valves. If you're not too sure, just make sure you've got the pistons so that they're, all three of them are somewhere below top dead centre. So if you've got the cams in, you don't have to worry about the valves hitting on the pistons themselves. So I put the cams in then. Now, um, these are marked. So you've got E3, E4 and so on. So E is obviously the exhaust side. So you can't really go wrong. So there's E2, E3, E4 on the exhaust side. And then on the inlet side, it's the same, but it's I2, 3, and 4. I put them in. Now, one thing I probably should have done is I should have done this before I put the head on. 
but I did assume that after the valve guide replacement and lapping in the valves that all the clearances would be good and I checked them all and you know Murphy's Law they're all right on the money except for the one on the inlet side just here and you can see I start measuring it here six out won't go even down to one thou the thinnest shim I had or feeler gauge it just wouldn't fit in there so um, unfortunately with a smart car the valve bucket is is basically the shim and I hadn't two options is either grind down that valve stem top which is not practical once it's in there or thankfully for me I was a machinist when I started my career uh, so I thought I'd just put this valve bucket in the lathe use a carbide, carbide uh, tool tip and I, I just uh, decide I'm going to try to machine that down just a little bit I need to take off about five thou now on my lathe I have a DRO which is a digital readout um, set up so I know exactly how much I'm taking off I carefully machine it off and I take um, exactly five thousandths of an inch off and you can see it here it's come up really good and it's not that much of a surprise I suppose when you've got accurate uh, equipment like that I'll put it back in I check it all tension it up again and then when I get the feeler gauges it's right on six thousandths of an inch so I'm really glad that I took the time to measure those and uh, all valves are now within spec now timing chain I've seen a few videos and it seems to be a bit unclear on a smart car but there's three marks there's a dot on the uh, cam gears you can just see it underneath that mark I made on the chain so the chains actually marked as well in three spots and what's supposed to happen is those three spots align to this see there's a little dot on the gear lines up to that mark and at the top there's two other chain links that are marked and they line up to the dots on those gears now that's 10 links between uh, that side cam and this one and then from there to the right hand down to the crank uh, pulley it's 31 links now what I found after doing this is it just didn't seem right and there's actually some other marks you can see here so there's a dash line on the on that cam and a mark on the other side cam and when you have them uh, al aligned you have the pin in the crank there's a little dot on the face of the gear and there's a mark on the casing line them up and that in my view is a much better way to do it so you line that dot up there to the casing at the back and the dashed mark on the left cam with the mark on the right cam and then just put the timing chain on and it's going to be right I'll show you that again in a minute so I put um, the chain tensioner back in you do that last uh, put the guides in put the chain tensioner in the way the chain tensioner works is there's a little this little ratchet uh, here and what this does is the chain wears it actually um, springs out one more tooth and it, it allows the tensioner to increase or, or increase tension but once it's increased it won't go back in again so uh, it's quite important you get that right so here I've got it back in I just rotate it around just check that everything moves freely now I'll just line these marks up again so you can see uh, I wouldn't worry about the chain myself I, there is those dots but see this dash on the left lines up to the uh, notch on the right and then at the same time you have that dot on the gear lining up to the casing I've gone this far and I don't want any leaks on this engine I don't want to pull this out again so I bought a brand new rear crank seal the one I had in there wasn't leaking but yeah you get this far and you just don't want to take any chances so a bit of lubricant around that seal uh, smart cars don't seem to have gaskets in many places so other than the head gasket so they use like a high temperature sealant this is the proper Durco sealant so put that on uh, bolt it down and actually goes together pretty good so um, that's the rear crank seal done then I'm going to put the front cam cover uh, cam uh, chain cover on uh, again a bit of lube on the crank a bit of lube in the seal uh, again no gasket so put 
uh, thin film of high temperature sealant around that front timing chain cover and once I've done that position the cover tension them up properly and that cover is basically all done just putting the oil filter on again it's important to put a light film of oil on there just if you want to make it easier to get off and it doesn't need to be over tensioned and then I'll put the drive pulley on it's got a little uh, pin in it so you can't really get that in the wrong spot and that bolt is quite tight so I did that up to about 120 Newton meters uh, and I made a little clamp to hold that put the valve cover on and this engine is literally back together now um, last thing here is a sump so again no sump gasket more high temperature sealant thin film around there uh, and then just position it on and tension it all up properly so that goes on well and yeah at this point the engine's basically back together except for the intake manifold and the exhaust and I'll probably install that once it's back in the car because uh, they're quite finicky these engines there's not much room now uh, there's the engine all back together the thing I want to do now is in install the flywheel and the clutch and uh, I buy a new one because again I you know the one I had had a bit of wear put a new thrust bearing in and you can actually see or hear this one rotates beautifully and you can listen to the old one that doesn't sound very good so there you go uh, the clutch plate had some wear on it. it was at a point where it was getting down to the uh, wear mark so I thought I'd might as well just do it again a bit of acetone around the new flywheel uh, just to make sure there's no no grime or more lubricant or anything on there wipe that down here's a new clutch plate and you see it against the old one uh, you know the old one probably would have went a bit longer but it was down to the wear marks as I said and I think you know it's a pain to change so I just put a new one in so to, to line this up properly I made another little tool in the lathe just put a little bit of a taper on it made it so it's a neat fit for the flywheel uh, not the flywheel the clutch plate and you can see there the taper fits into the flywheel so it goes in like that slides over and it positions it pretty much in in the perfect spot because you really want this to be accurate because when you put it on the gearbox and it's very awkward in a smart car you want all the shafts to line up properly so with that tool in there I'll put all the uh, bolts in tension them up correctly and you can see the spring plates pulling in and um, that is pretty much literally ready to go in the engine so once they're all tensioned that shaft I made as the uh, alignment tool I just pull out and do the final tensioning and these are 20 newton meters and then it's ready to go back in the car now I didn't film a lot of this it it was a pretty awkward job to be honest uh, there must be an easier way I, I suspect that Mercedes probably puts the engine gearbox together before they put the uh, whole thing in the car I've tr I've actually mounted the motor to the gearbox while it's in the cradle and it does fit but yeah it wasn't easy so in the next video I'll get this back in the car and ready for its first start. Stay tuned.